Okay. Take two. Am I here? Can't tell. <laughs> oh. it says I'm live. There's some people. Hi guys. Sorry, having a little bit of trouble with live today. So fantastic. Thank you, thank you. Um I'm just a little bit late. So I have four children. My youngest has decided she's not quite two, that she's not gonna go to sleep until 10 30 or eleven every night. She's currently laying down, but I may or may not have to get up, so. Um, sorry for taking a second. My feed didn't want to work for me. Um, here, I, I am a high school art teacher in southwest Arkansas, very rural district. When I started teaching at this school five years ago, there was a, two pottery wheels. There was a ceramic kiln, but slab building was really all that they had learned. So, I was lucky enough to start teaching a ceramics activity we, we were becoming a school of innovation and we started doing activity classes which were kind of like electives but you didn't get credit so, um, it was really more for just for fun to try to experience new things that we couldn't offer well it took off like crazy I now teach two sections two classes of clay and next year we'll offer ceramics three which is pretty exciting because like I said Three years ago, this didn't exist. Um, and I started with pinch creatures, pinch buildings. I, when I learned at Henderson, I started with hand building. And I think hand building is wonderful because, first of all, it's a little less difficult, in my opinion. Um, then finding access to a wheel and the ability to practice it and hand building anybody can do it and you can do it anywhere and it doesn't really take a whole lot of supplies um, and it helps you learn the different wetness stages of clay I think um, so it's a very good place to start off for my students um, so we started doing these pinch things to begin with because high school students don't like coils. Heaven forbid you ask them to make a coil that is as big around as their thumb and consistently thickness. It just doesn't happen. So, um, pinch pots were the way to go. My kids really enjoyed making these and I'll sh I've got some examples to show you. I posted the posted pictures of these the other day to just get you kind of an idea. So we make a pinch form and it starts out as just a round little pinch and then I have them compress and turn and, and form it and then we can add the extras eyes this one has fins and a tail um, this one has a clam's tail and kind of a warped mouth added to it okay so they can be all kinds of things my favorite one actually just happened this last rotation of kids um, I got a taco monster which was pretty fantastic if you've ever seen Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Uh, what did they call the Supre Taco Supreme? Um, it was pretty awesome. He took his pinch creature and he made it and then he flattened it and he filled it with all these little taco fillings. And then the back side he made into a taco dial, which was hilarious. And it was so funny. And I just loved it. And that kid, he's one of those middle school students that's always in trouble. So it was extra fun that he made something so cool. And what's really neat about these is that they're kind they're really versatile. Um, I call them pinch pot creatures because we do all kinds of things. You've seen a clam, you've seen a fish. I have a whale that we then took this year and cut out a section out of the clay here and made a cell phone amplifier. So there was some math added into it and they can, had to make for sure that their cell phone would fit in order for it to work. You had to think about some engineering problems like 
if the mouth wasn't big enough, was it going to amplify the sound at all? Probably not, and it didn't, and we had a few of those. We also, with this, can go totally different and just open it up and create these crazy little monsters. Now, this candy monster was created by one of my um, advanced art students, and he's candy. He's a candy monster. He likes candy, so he's eating candy, and you can see he's mounted on a slab uh, base. So he can be kind of a dish. She, she just was really working the fun that day. Um, so they can be just about whatever you want to be. The other day when the live, um, I think it was Rebecca Z was on and she did her auntie buddies. I thought that was incredible because when I do this, I do this in a class of like 20 to 30 kids. And so we use about a pound of clay. It never occurred to me to do them smaller. So that was really like eye-opening for me. I thought that was fantastic. Um, another thing that if we have time I'll show you is double pinch pots, which are can also kind of fun. And you can take and put them together, do a pinch pot and a pinch pot, slip and score, stick them together, smooth them to make a ball. And this is just a hollow sphere. I've added a tail and a head, but I've taken the same concept seasonally and changed it because I have rotation. Kids change throughout the year for junior high especially and I have a Christmas tree I've done these with pumpkins I've done sugar skulls I'm looking at this one so you can make your hollow form with a rattle no there's actually no ventilation holes so we can talk about that you can cut them open and this is a tea light holder so there's a little spot you can set it on top of a tea light and then you have a lit up jack-o-lantern or um, for my Dia de los Muertos kids, we made sugar skull, um, as well. So, they're really cool and very versatile. Um, if we have time, we'll talk about that. My favorite double pinch pot of all time was this guy. And it's a double pinch pot body, and then a smaller one for the head, and then, of course, she added all the extras to make Winnie the Pooh, and I've had this student for four years, five years maybe. I think she's been with me the whole time I've been at this school and she has just got a touch for clay and it's been glorious. So um, to get started, I just realized while fighting with my toddler to get ready for bed that I left my clay in the other room. So interlude, one second. Sorry about that guys um, I'm super excited for this presentation too thank you Hannah um, I think it's gonna be great and I'm so glad that you think these are cute I do these with uh, kids of all ages my children my biological children because all of my children are my children whether they're students or the ones I gave birth to my biological children are 12 11 7 and the little girl is two almost two and the three boys have done this with me for summer art camps for the past three years. My favorite thing about these, hands down, is that you can come back every summer and do this with the same kids and they never get tired of it because they can change it and make it unique to them every single year. My 11 year old has one of these that he created two years ago and he loves it and it sits on a shelf and he made it from just a simple ball of clay which is like amazing so um, to get started with my junior high I use a um, I just use the Hobby Lobby clay because it's accessible it's about the closest um, distributor to where I'm at so why not um, this is a little over a pound uh, probably 
between a pound and a pound and a half. Like I said, when I do this with students, I'm using 25 pounds of clay and I'm trying to stretch it among all of them. So I usually break them into about a pound. And we start off with a rough ball shape. I like to use this um, at a pretty plastic stage, which is, you know, slip, plastic, more uh, drying up to let it hard. I like it where it's soft. Um, I have little hands and I'm not super stout, so soft clay is my friend. Um, I start by taking the, I have my students start by taking the ball of clay and breaking it into two kind of even parts, but I tell them it's not really about making them perfect because they're pinch pots and they're handmade and handmade things should look handmade. Um, so I break a piece off and then as you can see, like one is bigger than the other. So I'm gonna take a bit off of this. And what this is, is it's gonna give me pinch pot one, pinch pot two, and extra for eyes, nose, hands, teeth, things like that. So I just set those off to the side. Now with me, I have a needle tool, I have a handy dandy wooden knife that I just absolutely love, and a small container of water because this is where it gets fun. And we're gonna go for a little ride so I can get you a little closer to my workspace. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna start with a sort of ball shape and we are going to, um, with, as with any pinch, I tell my students that pinching is not this, like you pinch someone. It is pinching like this with your four fingers and your thumb, and you're going to press and compress together. Now, as you're opening up, you have to pay attention to the direction that you're pulling the clay, because the clay is going to do what you tell it to do. So you have to be very careful how you communicate with the clay and what you tell it to do. If you want a small mouth creature, then don't go pulling out because you'll make a big mouth creature. So start with the ball and I take my thumb and I press down and this is where students ask me, how do you know Wes that it's not going to go through? Well, you can feel your thumb on the other side with your fingers. So I press my thumb to my finger and I can tell that there's about in this area here so I'm going to stop so I don't press through and I can readjust that that's a little thin I like to tell the students between a quarter of an inch and an inch thickness of clay is what I want so you can see that I can compress that around with my outside fingers it's probably not technical um, technically precise or anything but it works so I'm gonna take that opening and pressing my thumb against my forefingers, I'm going to open it up. Again, you have to be careful with how you tell this to open up. I've taught this lesson to four rotations of junior high kids for three years. I've never taught it to potters, so I am nervous. Um, open up that pinch pot. If you notice a little bit of cracking, all you have to do to fix that, generally, everybody says add water. Generally, if you're using it with very plastic clay, you can just smooth it with your fingers. So I don't even have to add any extra water. Um, the problem with telling students to add water is that um, <laughs> they want to drown it. Can I just stick this in my cup of water? No, no, you don't need that much water. Your fingertip is all you need to put in the water. Don't put the clay in the water. Um, you'll just end up with mud. So you can smooth and once you feel like you've got it smoothed well, then you can, and I not only press, but I, um, what is that, stroke the clay kind of. I rub my thumb against it in order to open it up. So if you can see that, um, I start out, I started with a double pinch. Okay, anyway, <laughs> that's the nervousness. All right. So I start getting a pretty consistent, like I tell the students, your clay, when it dries, you know, shrinks. And each different clay body that we use, we are up to like five now, has a different shrinkage rate. And they don't want to shrink 
the same if they're this thick compared to if they're this thick. So you want to make for sure that your clay is a consistent thickness. And you can do that by just feeling the space between your thumb and your fingers. So here I am with a silly little pinch pot form. Now, if you're making just a basic pinch pot, that's absolutely cool too. Um, at this point, I've got a cup. Cool. We're gonna we could add a handle on, and we'd have a little pinch pot cup, little foot if we wanted to. We could have a tiny uh, ha handleless teacup, like a Japanese sake cup, I guess. Um, I like seeing the finger marks because again this is handmade so it to me it's supposed to be like that um but you can smooth those out as well and it just takes a little rubbing if that's not something you're into so um i'm making a creature i'm not really sure what kind of creature i'm making yet i forgot and was going to do a double pinch pot instead of a single which sounds silly now but um then i'm going to take and kind of set him down on the table and I'm gonna decide if I want him to stand I've got to think about where I'm gonna put his legs um, somebody give me some kind of idea what would you like to see I've done fish I've done monsters I've done all kinds of things and usually at this point this is where when I start manipulating the form my kids say oh that looks like one time they said that looks like a, a smiling clown's mouth okay <laughs> I guess I'd pressed it like and we're like that looks like a clown's mouth so I put eyes and a big red nose and made clown hair and we had a clown that year as the demo um, which my kids thought was hilarious but I never I do this so often I'm not making it while I'm making it so anybody see per se while I'm smoothing this a fish fish could be cool A fish with a dor like a dorsal fin or just a tail fin fish. We've done frogs. Um, my mother-in-law has a, <laughs> a rather large frog, the biggest one I did, that had feet out here and hoppy legs and big old eyes and she even had a tongue with flies on it. A bird is a cool one. Um, I did a double pinch pot there. Um, okay, so if I'm going to go with, I think I'm going to go with the first one. Let's go with the first one. We'll do a fish. Fish is fun. Okay, so uh, another thing to mention is you don't have to necessarily work with your form up. You can also work with it down. Um, I've had students... Um, add legs and a head and make animals. You can have, I've got a young lady that made a cow, an elephant. That one. That's what I'm doing. Thank you, Jackie. Yes, yes, because the last one I saw was really, really cute, and I just got through making these earrings, so Cookie Monster it is. Um, but my favorite was they took this form, added four legs down here, pinched a little lid on the top and added a little cow face so you actually had like a cow container and I was thinking about doing that the other day so we're just gonna get right to it so if I'm gonna make cookie he is a screaming cookie eating guy right he's ah, nom, 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 cookies <clears throat> kind of like my toddler God love her so big open mouth I remember the extra clay that we pinched off and pulled to the side? We're going to really quickly pinch off a couple of little pieces. And, oh, this is going pretty quickly. I guess that's what happens when you do this all the time. So I find when I'm doing eyes that if I want them to be the same size, I pinch off the same amount at the same time. Now, um, Cookie Monster has, like, the crazy wobbly eyes. So can't really think of how I would do that but I can point them different directions so um, just rolling your clay into a nice little round ball um, will get you your eyeballs 
And of course, you can't have a cookie monster without a cookie, right? So I'm gonna use this little blob here. Nah, cookie doesn't want a tiny cookie. Cookie wants a big cookie, so let's go here. And um, we're gonna just press and pinch. Now, um, there are two types. Basically, all of hand building can be broken down into two types. And you've got additive and subtractive. Additive is adding clay to it. That's why they call it additive, right? Subtractive is like your carving techniques. It's removing clay. So with um, pinch monsters, you do just a little bit. You just do just a little bit of both. Okay, so I've got the basic shape of a cookie. I'm going to come in, and another reason that I really like using plastic clay is that I find it's a little more forgiving and slipping and scoring. Um, slip and score or scratch and, scratch and slip or, you know, um, whatever you want to call it, is the process of scratching the surface with a tool of some form and um, using water or slip, which is just super wet clay, to uh, attach pieces. Well, if your clay is really plastic and it comes from the same blob, which these did, uh, it wants to stick to itself. So whereas I traditionally might not be able to stick these two together, I can, you see, I'm picking the cookie up with the little nugget that I just attached. So um, that's another reason plastic clay is fantastic for this and for younger students because it's the softer clay from the same box, same bag, um, it works really well for being more forgiving than more firm clay. And I'm just a sissy and like soft clay. So, um, we got a big old giant cookie shape there. So, while I'm doing that, I can actually take my tool and kind of poke at and give some texture on it. So that's kind of time consuming, but um, you could give yourself some cookie texture on it. Okay, I'll come back to that. But with your eyes, the same thing, my kids, they, they think I'm crazy for this, but this is what I do. When I attach something, you saw me pick up my nugget off of my cookie. If I attach something to my piece, I'm going to pull on it to see if it's attached. So where I just stuck those two together really wetly, I can stick this here and it's going to pop off. This one has sat out and got a little more firm than these two. These clay bodies were the same wetness. When this one is really plastic and this one's a little drier, this is when it's really important to slip and score. So I don't mix up slip because I'm not that, I'm not that well practiced, but I just take a little bit of water and dip my finger in it and rub the surface of the clay. See? And if you see it where it's getting slick there, it's creating the slip that you need to stick the pieces together. So what I'll do is I will rub both the little spots for his eyes. Are they close together? I don't remember if they're close together. This guy's going to be. And I'll do that on his head, and I'll do that for the backs of both eyes. And I just rub it just a little bit so that it's shiny. And you can start to feel it be a little tackier than before. So that creates my slip. And then I use my needle tool, or you can use, I've seen people use a fork. Um, I've done it a couple of times, but I'm relatively fast at slipping and scoring, so I've never really needed a fork. And just scratch the surface a little. You don't have to cut deep. Another thing that I tell my students, you're just kind of like when you go get your fingernails done and they take a Dremel tool and, and rough up the surface. It gives you more surface area to attach to. So slip and scored these both. One here. One here. I'm not going too fast, am I, guys? I do this so much that I can't tell anymore. So I'm supporting on the inside with my thumb. It's kind of hard to see from that angle. And pressing down with my two fingers here 
so that I'm supporting the clay as I'm pressing so that it doesn't lose its shape. But I'm also able to, at this point, pick up my pinch pot where my eyeballs are attached. So, in the process, I've kind of shifted them a little, the shaping, so I can go back in and fix that. Now, um, Cookie doesn't really, he doesn't have a tongue. He's got a big open mouth that just moms. Um, I can take and I'm actually going to dart this form. Darting is the process of removing a section. So this is a little more similar to what Cookie Monster's mouth would be like. So you can alter the form a bit more that way. So I'm taking my needle tool and marking a triangle here to just dart that form. Cut a dart out. The dart, I think, refers to this section. Um, and then go back in and smooth that up. And so now I've got my, see he's a little more cookie, cookie monster friendly um, that way. And then I'll come back in. I'm just smoothing with my fingers. Water to this creature. It's, uh, it's pretty plastic. It's pretty wet. It's like fresh out of the bag. Uh, it's not really fresh out of the bag. I just, when I'm not using it, keep it wrapped in a damp paper towel in a plastic bag. And that keeps it nice and soft, moist. So again, I'm going to dart the side here. One, two. And I don't always cut through in one pass. Sometimes I'll cut out in a couple. This particular project is very versatile um, for all sorts of ages. This is something I teach. My 7th graders, I have them for 9 weeks. 7th mm -hmm. graders have 2 class periods to do this. They build the pinch form in one and then they come back in and do the, I call it the makey makey, but it's all of my classes makey makey. So they come back in and add the, the appendages, the cookie, the cookies, the eyeballs, the fins, and those sorts of things um, in the second class. So now that I have my cookie monster face, I feel like his eyes may have been further back, but here I am. And then I can make this cookie as attached in here if I want to, or I can leave it as removable so cookie can be hungry or he can not. Um, I like to I like to make things that can have multi purposes. So he could hold on to your rings, he could be a spoon holder, he could he could just hang out on the desk and um so does anybody have any questions on pinch pot creatures while I'm plowing through this much faster than I thought I would? This cookie monster. Um, Cookie Monster is very hairy, so I'm going to give him some texture. Not like the terrible dotted texture here. I'm actually going to take um, my needle tool and just kind of press it. So see, it'll give me a little bit of uh, hair texture. So can you see that? Y'all are so quiet, it makes me wonder if my feed's working right. Oh, I just got to, uh, got invited to teach <laughs> coil pots for a 4-H group here once our virus stuff settles down here in Arkansas. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. I already have three classes of that lined up. Um, I think Girl Scouts would absolutely love to make these for you. Uh, with you for you um, that's a great idea Denise I think that's fantastic any kind of community groups of any kind of ages like like I said my six-year-old 
um, when he was five, he did this, and he still has that. So does my 11-year-old, who just loves it. So, as you can see, I'm just pressing the side in. There's probably an easier way to do this hair texture. Probably a better way. Um, oop, dotted my eyeball, but that's okay. Um, because I can fix it. Very plastic clay is easy to fix. So I was feeling really intimidated at the thought of teaching this to potters who were probably like, uh, pinch pots. Um, not all really am. So, <sighs> I sat down this morning and thought double pinch pots would be something that's a little more tricky that I could talk about if I have time. So, while I'm sitting here dotting these, um, here's my start of my cookie dough texture. I want to keep the eyeballs smooth because remember eyeballs are smooth. And my cookie to go with him. Well, um, earlier I pulled out the clay here and I talked about double pinch pots, which are the next step. This is what I teach seventh grade. And then double pinch pots more along the lines of these guys. This guy. This guy. Double pinch pots are my eighth grade thing. While all, most of my kids are super excited about these creatures, uh, by the time they get to eighth grade, if you have middle schoolers, have had middle schoolers, or just know any middle schoolers, um, sometimes they can have the sass. This is true, and that's, um, Denise, a lot of, a lot of us are having our children at home and we're trying to teach them arty things. Clay is wonderful for that. Um, like I said, my five-year-old can do it, so it's pretty fantastic. Um, middle school kids can have sass and I love them. I love them, but sometimes they'll fuss and be like, but I did this last year. I already know how to do this. Nobody would ever have that attitude, right? So then I'm like, okay, sass learn how to do doubles so we ta started talking for double pinch pots and I while I do like basic demos for seventh and eighth grade I thought you know what the concept is the same so let's do that but let's take it a little further for you guys and do something a little more impressive so we're double pinching set in there okay same concept you have a ball this one's smaller because it's what was left of the other nice and plastic clay pinch it into a couple of sections section one roll back into a ball and make our pinch the same way we did earlier we're just going to start by pressing in the center and opening that up it's important when you're making a double pinch that pinch pot one and pinch pot two not be the same size so much as have a similar rim um, as you're sticking these two together uh, as you're sticking these two together you want those rims to meet up so while this is noticeably more clay than I started with there rolly rolly roll noticeably more clay I about knocked her off she'd be upset at me if I lost her um, it actually will be okay so long as I pay attention to what I tell the clay to do, how I tell it to open up. If you start to have cracks, you can add some water or you can just blend it with your fingers. I like to just blend it with our fingers because like I said, too soft and it won't hold its form. Uh, <clears throat> so here we are with roughly the same sort of shape. Now, I made a Kirby one time just to test and see if plastic clay really needed slipped and scored because, you know, middle schoolers, right? You got to have things to show them. This is why we do what we do. So I put together the two balls and, I, and then he came out of the kiln and he popped apart right along that seam. And so all I had to do was show them slipping and scoring. It's important. So just like we did to attach our pieces, I'm going to take and dip my finger in the water. Run it all around the edge. 
and that's going to create that shiny sticky slip. I tell my junior high kids, this is like your clay glue, basically. Okay, so I do one and two, both of my pinch pots. And score it. You don't have to be perfect. Um, I read somewhere that when you're scoring, it doesn't really matter how many marks you make. Really, just that you do it more than a couple of times and in the same direction. So if I'm coming out here, I don't want to come across here. I want to make for sure that I'm coming out on both. Um, I think the idea is like creating interlocking braces for like wood, if that makes sense. To me, those of us who are visual, if you are trying to stick pieces together and they're like this, they're going to sit on top of each other. But if you stick them together and they're like this, this is going to be a t much tighter attachment than this is going to be. So always make for sure that you're slipping and scoring in the same direction so you get this. Um, so slipped, scored all the way around, and then I'm going to line these guys back up. <laughs> Denise, that Girl Scout may have been one of mine. Clay glue. It's actually really funny because usually in my classroom I have some advanced kids working um, at all hours. And so one of my advanced students who comes in to work on clay, of all things, uh, fusses at my underclassmen about calling glaze paint. Are we going to paint them yet? It's glazing. It's not paint. Um, which is pretty funny <laughs> to me because that's how it was. Um, without describing, I put them together and then you notice that was round one just to make sure they lined up. And then step two, fa phase two, round two, is just pinching them together. And it kind of makes my what my kids affectionately call the UFO shape. So you see here before I close up that first round. Um, it kind of makes it more of a UFO, which is fine because we're going to fix that, but um, that's round two. And sometimes I'll actually do round two a couple of times, but this is just what helps it to stick together real good. So round three then, and it doesn't matter if it's this way or this way, is to just come back in and smooth that down. The idea is I don't want to know where my seam is. For these two pots having joined. Um, I want it to be smooth so that I can't tell what's happening. So I'm going to just smooth, smooth, smooth like crazy. If you've done this right, you don't have any area for that clay, for the air to leak out. So that you can actually, I've seen, I've seen this several times in hand building today. Um, where you can pat it, you can tap it, you can paddle it, um, and kind of reshape your form and get what you need. So, um, let's see, I've got a turkey, I've got pumpkin, I've got a sugar skull, I've got Winnie the Pooh, which is a super impressive one, um, that takes more than 20 minutes, and I've got about 15 left, so, um, what could I, I'm going to make a, a chicken. Let's do, we said birds earlier. You want to see a bird, guys? Um, we'll make a fun little chicken. How does that sound? So I'm smoothing it out, and you can see it's, at this point, I shouldn't really be able to tell. There's a little bit. I can tell the seam is there. Um... So I can smooth that. And then I'm going to take, and if I want, I can stretch the form. I can take and uh, kind of fatten it out a little by patting, patting and rolling. I can round it up. A funky chicken. I love that idea, Larry. Love it. Okay. Um, I can take and compress and say I want to add uh, the tail, for example, using the existing clay. 
I can just kind of pinch and compress. If I make my pinch pot forms a little thick, I have a little bit of clay to play with. So um, there's like a basic start of a tail. It's not finished, but um, somebody want to volunteer to be my timekeeper and let me know when there's a five minute, like a five minute warning. I always have that in class because I'll start making and I'll just make all day long and I like <laughs> next class what's next class no 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 they gave me ceramics at the end of the day for a reason um I'm never ready to be done with it so if I want to make a funky chicken <laughs> I've got a tail started here and I think chickens have tails lower down than that yes So, what if I add, you guys are going to tell that my country girl is not, I don't chicken um, very much <laughs> here in just a minute. So, I'm going to roll my kids' logs, um, snakes, Wes, they're snakes. Uh, no, I'm going to roll a small coil and start shaping it. My kids think I'm crazy. It's okay. They're probably right. So. <laughs> I have a little hey hey that I made in my classroom. But it was made by throwing a And then altering that filander. So. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to give this funky chicken some really fun eyeballs to go with it. So I've got a super long neck for a chicken, I think. That's like a turkey type neck. So I'm going to think about where I'm attaching that. And you notice I just stick that on there. Do as I say, not as I do. Uh, slip and score because this clay is sat out for just a little while. So slip by adding some water. Score by scratching the surface. Am I making any sense? Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Well, I'm just over here talking to myself, which I totally do in the studio and in my classroom. <laughs> this is why the kids say I'm crazy. They're not wrong. Okay, so line the grooves up. I'm pretty sure that I could attach this and then stretch that neck out further. You notice that I don't really use a whole lot of tools. Um, I think hand building is just that. <laughs> oh, Denise, you are not wrong. You do have to be a little crazy to be a teacher or they will fix you up with it. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. I've been really nervous about this. Like I said, I teach this to kids all the time. Um, kids who know nothing. So I'm like teaching them. <laughs> they know nothing about clay, not necessarily nothing because <laughs> Lord knows those kids know more than I do. <laughs> So I've got my, I think it looks more like a duck nail, <laughs> and a funny little tail, okay, and so I can come in, <laughs> we're going to get some crazy hey hey eyes, again if I want my eyes to be a similar form, I'm going to pinch two at a time, today I'm going to make them dramatically smaller. Ooh, Denise, hats off to you, honey. I used to teach K-4, and God love you, and teach in kindergarten in August. Like, whoo, a Canadian goose. Could be a Canadian goose. I'm Truth be told, I miss my littles. Um, sometimes I have flashbacks to hearing, being yelled at me across the store and then I'm wrapped up by a kid that is not my biological that is just like hugged up on me and I'm looking for a parent who's frantically searching for their missing child while they're uh <laughs> I I'm fond of hey hey too I think I'm a little um I I'm a little hey hey but who wouldn't be a little hey hey with 30 some odd kids in a room so, funky chicken. 
Because funky chicken sounded fun. Funky chicken. I told you I was going to do uneven eyes, right? Like, this is me after a long day teaching. This is me after my last week of teaching. When there was the full moon and a Friday the 13th and the coronavirus started. Kids were going crazy. No, no, you cannot eat the glue. <laughs> it was, it was impressive. Okay, so, um, I can point his mouth. I think I'm going to give him another little mouth. Am I okay on time? Yeah, I'm all right. So, slipping and scoring. I'm not really worried about damaging him by flipping him around, you see. The double pinch pot guy is awesome in that respect. Like he's pretty he's pretty fixable, um, I found. So this is where I break out one of my fun little modeling tools that I just got. Cause potters are always getting new tools, right? I feel like I, every time I'm <laughs> absolutely got it. Um I feel like I'm always trying to look for new tools and things, new tools when I get paid, like, you know, once a month. I love my job. I do. I love my job. I love my kids. I think they're absolutely crazy and hilarious. And that's been the hardest part of the last couple of weeks is not having them. But I tell you, they're resourceful. They'll find you on Facebook. They will Snapchat you. They will email you. Mom, I missed you. I'm mom to like half. Um, I miss you. When is school coming back on? When are we doing back? And it just happened around the art show too. So like, they're freaking out. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine, my darlings. It will be fine. So here's a crazy funky chicken started. I'm going to give him some fun little feathery tails too. So I could take and pinch some, um, Jennifer, I think it'd be a fantastic, regardless of the age of the kids, it seems like everybody loves the pinch pot creatures. Like, they, they really dig it. And it's really cool to see the variety. Like I said, everything from Taco Supreme to um, pigs and cows and farm animals. And so, I'm going to stick myself a feather on there. That's a terrible feather, I know, but it's okay. Barbara, I like to tell myself that they that it's because they love me and that's why they find me. Um, part of me feels like it's because they just want to be pestersome. <laughs> it's not true. I know. Um, I, I'm usually the teacher where they I'm the safe room. Um, a lot of my kids come to me for all kinds of counseling. Things they don't tell you about being a teacher. Um, a lot of times you end up hearing more about a student's life than um, you anticipated, things they don't train you for, I guess. Um, I, I love my kids, and I think that shows in my classroom. My administration tells me all the time. It's obvious. I, I go above and beyond for them. Uh, they email me at 7.30, 8 o'clock, and I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I'll answer that. I linked it to my phone so you can email me if you need me. Um, so. Denise, a lot of schools are going to online teaching and it's, um, <laughs> it's kind of scary. It's kind of scary. I, we started using, uh, we're a school of innovation and we are one-to-one -one iPad pros at the high school. So my, all of my seven through 12 students, and I mean all, have access to an iPad pro whether it's during the day or uh, as a day user or if they did it to take it home. Um, they all have access. So we use Google Classroom. So working online is not unfamiliar to me. But <laughs> I, I just, I miss them. I want to see them in person. <laughs> um, and I know that they feel the same way. So I've, I've had a few of them tell me they're ready to be back. So, um, I'm going to add some wings to him at a later point, but I wanted to show you guys real quick what I did this morning. 
because I was talking about double pinch plots and thinking about double pinch plots. Thank you, Kathy, for the five minute warning. Um, I'm terrible with time, so <laughs> start late, end late. And what's next, class? Like, eh. so I was really, really nervous about this, and this morning I sat down and can you guess who this little guy is that's a support if you don't know about those you can add a little nugget of clay into a um, delicate area to help the drying this tail here is heavier than this wanted to support so I just stuck a little nugget in there um, a clay support that you know so I didn't slip and score it so as it sh dried a little it's easy to remove um, so this guy is made with started with a body double pinch pot just like this guy my little funky chicken i think i might add legs to him larry should we add legs to him yes you totally got chess i did what i, did, I was hoping then um so started with the double pinch pot and kind of stretched and elongated it and then this is just a single pinch pot that i yes denise chess I think he's fantastic. My kids love him, and he's kind of crazy like me, so it's appropriate. Um, so double pinch pot, single pinch pot, and then you can see here where I whipped him around and kind of stretched and told him where to go and made that little pinch pot curve back in and then attached him here. From there, I attached arms that were little coils, um, sculpted little fingers. If you see, it's really cute. Um, and attached legs up here and a tail coil 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 with some pinch <laughs> he does kind of look like foghorn leghorn <laughs> actually um <clears throat> so with him the last little bit were the eyes and the nose and um the details on the face because the the head had to firm up just a little bit in order to add all of those things so um, but he's, I think, I think I'm going to glaze him and he's going to be my new little mascot. Um, crazy. If only I could disappear like he does at will. <sighs> what am I talking about? I disappear amongst my children all of the time. Okay, so. Double pinch pot. Single pinch pot. You can do some really cool, really cool things with these guys. Um, I know my five minute warning happened just a minute ago. Oh. Looks like I got, like, four. So, um, anybody, if you have any questions, you can shoot me a message on Messenger. Um, obviously, I'm paying attention to it since my kids are hollering at me for things. Um, I, I'm pretty good about answering. I think, judging from the silence in my living room, that, um... My baby is asleep, so I'll probably go to sleep after this, but um, I can get back to you later. So, what do you think? Long legs? Short legs? Standing? Sitting? Can't decide. Decisions, decisions. I want to say that I think it's amazing that everybody has volunteered to help out the teachers who, who are doing online teaching. I know I shared the link to the YouTube channel as well as to the Clay Buddy site to my students. And my Clay kids have especially been hurt by um, missing out when we knew it was possible last Thursday when we started talking about planning online lessons. Um, I told my clay kids, because I've got three of them for sure, that clay is their outlet. And I said, just get some clay. Reclaim clay today. If you, I'm not even worried if you're caught up. Just, if you want to take some clay to work with, reclaim it, take it. Because, yes, I teach my students to reclaim. We were blessed with um, about $1,000 worth of donated clay from the Arkansas Art Center. So, we have been using it to make amazing things. Um... I don't feel very creative, Jackie, so thank you for saying that, because um, I guess it's, I don't see it in myself, the artist mentality, you know, um, I see it in others, I don't really see it in myself, so I can share these pinch creatures when they're finished, um, after I 
finagle the last little bits of um, the legs and things. I'll probably let this dry up to a leather hard laid back on its side and then attach them. It's another thing about um, working with younger kids. So I can see we experiment all the time. I love experimenting. It's fun. Um, ah! Oop. <laughs> Added that way too low. All right, so like I said, if you have any questions, um, or any tips or anything that you just want to reach out and be like, hey, it's another play person. You need a little crazy in your life. I got you. Um, <laughs> I have a Facebook page, Frog Level Studios, because I live on Frog Level, so that's what we call it. Um, and I do all kinds of things, from making earrings with my Cricut to polymer clay earrings to the clay stuff. Clay stuff being kind of my fave. So, uh -huh. with that, I think we're good. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to finish and hopefully save this and I will share these with you when they're finished. Bye guys.